The Riesling has a lot of flavor and a lot of body. This one's a new one. Now, we snuck one in on you. Where do you think this one's from? It's, I told you it's not from Germany. I said it's local. No, but Livermore has some great wines now. They really are, are very up and coming. It's a great place to go and, and check out wines. This is actually not even from California. This is from, this is one of the few areas uh, uh, called the, uh, uh, up in uh, Washington, the um, Columbia River area, the Columbia area. Now, the reason why they do that, if you think of Germany, Germany is a little bit colder. They have longer summers, right? And cooler summers. So it takes grapes longer to get ripe. And that adds character. Do you know the worst thing you can do to a grape if you're making wine while you're growing the grape? Is water it all the time. You would think you got to keep the water going and make sure that it's not thirsty. And, but realistically, to make a really good wine, you have to stress the grapes. You have to make them think, uh-oh, I better hold on to what I've got because the water is not here. I'm not getting enough. And by doing this, just like apples, if you always water an apple tree, the apples are okay. If from time to time you let it dry out and you stress those trees a little bit, they start retaining everything. They hold on to everything. And that's what they do with, with all grapes. So a good wine is, is not watered to where it always has enough. Sometimes it's stressed. But that also, when they say this is a good vintage or that's not a good vintage, often that's because of the weather that summer. This one is actually exceptionally good because they had a very, very cool summer. And so it took an additional three and a half to four weeks up in the Columbia area for the, right, for the grapes to finally get ripe enough for them to make the wine. Because, you know, they have to let them get to a certain amount of sugar because the yeast eats the sugar, right? So without enough sugar, then you're not going to make enough alcohol. And then what's wine if it's not apple, alcohol? It's just grape juice, right? So what they do is they w had to wait. So three to four weeks is a long time. Usually there's a week or two, you know, a little sooner, a little later. But this one particular year, it took a long time. So if you taste this wine, and taste this with either of the cheddars, either of the yellow uh, cheeses that you've got. Right. But you see the difference between the first one and the first wine we had and the second one? Sweeter, Sweeter. right, right. Because, you know, yeast, and that's the other thing that they decide, the yeast that they feed to wine, to the grapes, it dies at a certain point when you have a certain, when it's a certain alcohol content. So what they do with this wine is there's much more sugar in the Gewürztraminers and the Riesling grapes. And so what happens is the yeast grows and grows and grows and produces a little bit of alcohol to a point, and then there's too much alcohol and the yeast stops growing but that could mean there's still some sugar left. And they, they call that residual sugar. And that means that's how you get the sweetness. Now I mentioned those other, the Auslises and the Baron Auslises and those. Those are basically like shriveled up grapes. Literally sh shriveled up grapes. They'll leave them on the vine so long that all the water starts coming out and they look like raisins, almost. Well, what happens there? They take all the water out and it's all sugar. And then that way, when they make the wine, there's so much sugar left over that it's sweet and syrupy. So that's kind of a, 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 when you look at a lot of different German wines, that's what you look at. They're spicy in a good way, sweet spicy like this Riesling. Um, but again, this wine itself stayed on the vine for an extra um, several weeks, almost a full month. Um, another thing that that this wine is good for, or, or the reason why this wine is as sweet as it is, is it's very, very sandy soil. So some areas you have rocky soil, sandy soil, rich soil, on the hillsides, uh, but draining and proper drainage. If you go to Germany and you're, you're along the, the, the river there, the Rhine, 
you see all of the vineyards, and they're all on these steep hills. I don't know how they pick all the grapes because they're on these very steep hills. But what that allows it is the water, they get what they need and all the rest of the water runs off. And then again, they're stressed a little bit by doing that and you get a great, great flavor. Now, which of the two cheeses do you like the best? The lighter or the darker orange? Or if you tr got a chance to try both? The darker orange, why? It goes well with the wine, doesn't it? Now, did you get a chance to try both before you tasted the wine? If you haven't, take a little sip of water and clear your, clear your palate, and then you can try over again with the other. A little bit of, a little bit of, of, uh, of um, water will help get rid of some of the flavors that are in your mouth. Before we go on to the, th or any, any questions about Gewurztraminer or, or Rieslings? I'm surprised nobody asked me why we didn't choose one from California. But we wanted to give you a little bit of a variety and let you know, as, as we had mentioned at the very beginning, wines come from all over and certain grapes grow better in certain areas. And uh, when we get to the Pinot Noir, that's kind of one of my favorites because you can grow it in so many different places and you have so many different kinds of wine. Pinot, yes, you can go ahead. Uh, serving the Pinot. I had this, we had the seafood restaurant on Fisherman's Wharf and Pinot, out of all the red wines, I mean, you think about fish, most people drink white wine with fish. But we had a very large Pinot Noir menu because Pinot is one of the reds that goes very well with fish. So it works well when I go out with my wife and I'm eating red meat, because I always like to, you can tell I like to eat red meat. <laughs> and my wife eats fish and she eats light. And sometimes if we're gonna have wine, it's difficult to decide what wine, because if I get a big red wine and she's having a piece of fish, she won't taste the fish, because the red wine is so strong, right? But if I'm eating a nice big steak, I won't be able to taste a little, you know, a, a, a Savion Blanc or a buttery Chardonnay. But with a Pinot Noir, it goes well with steak. It goes well with uh, fish. I would say probably more of the meatier fish, but white fish as well. So I think we probably had uh, 25 different red wines and probably about 15 of them or, tw or so were Pinots at the restaurant. On the, uh, for the red wine? For the Pinot, yes. The second one so far? Yes. And that's why we decided to do them in the order that we did. Because think now also what you tasted. And think about what it would have tasted, what the uh, Chardonnay would have tasted like if you tasted it right after the Riesling. The Riesling was sweet and it was, right? You probably would have tasted the Chardonnay and say, nah, this is kind of sour or this is kind of bitter, or there's not a lot of flavor. So that's why also we're, we're trying them in the order that we are, for that reason as well. But if everybody has this Pinot, it's a couple of words, and I'll try to plant them in your head and see if you can taste them in this red wine. Do you taste plum, ripe cherries, fruitiness? When they say, have you ever heard somebody say this wine is fruit forward? I'm using all these big terms that to me don't mean anything, honestly. But if you hear people say, oh, it's a fruit forward wine, what that mainly means is when do you taste it? So you take a sip, oh, I taste the fruit. Oh, now I taste that oak. Right? This is toasty oak as well in, when, afterwards too. So you can taste those sometimes. I, I, gotta, I let you in on a little secret. When I first started learning about wines, I thought it was a bunch of rubbish when people would say, I taste tobacco and this, and they named 10 or 12 different things that they can taste in a wine. And I was like, I taste wine, and I like this wine. 